other one welcome back today we're going to be talking about cci blazer okay this is brass ammunition here i'll put the stock so we can get a, a look at it all right so one of the things that does annoy me about cci blazer is the way that they package it um they use these big trays that make the box itself bigger uh, let's say compared to let's say Tula, you can see how Tula is packed. 50 rounds is packed a lot more compact, which is a really big deal when you're buying like 4,000 rounds at a time, right? Um, you know, and you're storing it. Storing boxes this size are a lot more convenient than storing boxes this size. Okay, so and also, if as you hold the two boxes, right? Because this is more compact when you go like this it doesn't move so much this moves a whole lot more okay um so if you're carrying a thousand rounds on your shoulder you know you know it, it tends to to move around a lot more it squashes around so so that's the first thing i want to put out there that's the one of the annoying things about this okay um as far as price okay oh uh, this is pretty affordable because uh where are we we're october uh november we're in November yet? No, yeah, we're in November. November 2023. Um, I just looked up the price on Ammo Seek. Uh, a thousand rounds of this is two hundred and forty dollars. Uh, fifty rounds is about twelve dollars. Uh, you know, plus your, your your taxes and shipping. Um, I haven't bought this in a while, so I can't give you an actual you know. Um, but I just looked it up today. That's what it is on Ammo Seek. So it, very affordable, right? You know. Uh, you know, right now, a thousand rounds for two hundred forty dollars, plus your shipping and taxes. I'm guessing it's going to come out something like two eighty or something. You know, uh, delivered. Um, very affordable. So, pretty much for the last year or so, uh, I'm mostly either I'm either shooting Tula or I'm shooting this. Okay, um, and uh, particularly with my carry guns, this is what not even I practice with, but hey, this is my carry gun right here, right? G43 right right here and get behind the camera see if I can get you in focus right there right blazer so this is what I carry okay um, now a lot of people will be like oh, why are you carrying full metal jacket why not hollow points um, you know you're gonna over penetrate you're gonna shoot into some bystanders all these BS that I normally hear. So uh, here's the thing, okay? And I've, I've mentioned this before in other videos. In a self-defense type of situation, you can expect half your shots to miss, okay? Uh, so you have to be relying on something beyond hollow points, you know, not over penetrating. Because even hollow points, you know, sometimes they don't act, they don't they don't act the way they're supposed to act, okay? So I have discussed other techniques. Like, let's say if you see a problem escalating, you use the time to change your position, right? Because usually there's escalation, right? So you use the time to change your position. Um, you know, just a couple of feet can make all the difference so that there's, you know, there's no innocent bystanders uh, behind your threat. And the other thing is uh, if you're in an ambush type of situation where you don't have a chance to check, to check your surroundings, the threat is probably going to be a foot or two in front of you. Uh, basically, you know... I'm shooting like this into the low hip or something like this, yeah, or I'll come up in, and I've done videos where I'm in this position here using my elbow to grapple, okay? So if you look over here, you see that I'm shooting downwards, regardless whether my bullets hit the target or miss the target, they're only going to end up about maybe six to eight feet on the ground behind the target, okay? So that's how I deal with, uh, with, with, with the, it's a full metal jacket, going to over penetrate, you know, the ammunition is cheap enough, okay, that I can afford to put twice as many bullets on the threat if I need to, okay? So that's my mindset. Now, uh, here's the other thing, and this is probably the more important component, okay? Uh, I live in a very low-risk area, okay? I don't go out into, you know, high-risk areas at night or anything. This carry gun that I have here uh, is... The, the, the primary purpose is to assert my rights, okay, my right to carry. But the secondary reason, right, 
is basically for training people or training myself. So on any given day, I can be here or I can be at another gun range uh, and I might want to demonstrate something and whatever I've got on me, that's what I'm going to demonstrate with. So the same ammunition that I practice with is the same ammunition that I carry. Um, and it's just, it, it, you know, I do this every day. Okay. Um, so it's not going to, I mean, I, I found it really inconvenient to be like, oh, wait one second, I got to change the ammunition in my gun so I can demonstrate. Okay. So it's a lot easier for me to just, you know, whatever I got on me, that's what I demonstrate with. Okay. Uh, and the other, the other point beyond that is I don't, I also don't think it's a great idea to practice one type of ammunition and then carry another because different ammunition acts differently. The recoil can be differently. The way it uh, interacts with your gun can be differently. So, uh, so I mean, I, I, I definitely recommend carrying what ammunition, whatever ammunition you practice with. And if you are a person that likes to carry like super expensive ammunition, that's the ammunition you should be practicing with. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's get back on course here because I did go off a little bit on a tangent there. and let's talk about this CCI blazer. So obviously over the last year or two years, um, I've gained a good deal of confidence in this ammunition um, in order for me to carry it. Now the way I developed that confidence was not by uh, running it through the chronograph and shooting, you know, you know, tight groups at 100 yards. The way I came, I decided to use this ammunition, right, from, and it wasn't because of the name, it wasn't because it said CCI or anything like that, so, uh, was basically, I've, uh, as you guys know, I do a lot of gun building, okay, uh, and a lot of these guns that you build sometimes are very finicky, okay, you know, so, some of them can be very finicky, so one of the things I, I noticed is that um, some of my more finicky builds uh, work better with this ammunition okay uh so that so i was like hey if the finicky guns work pretty good with that ammunition well the guns that work very well are going to be even that much more reliable with this ammunition okay um so so for example let's say i, I built a whole bunch of these g43s um you know some of them are not like 100 percent reliable right so what i do is i go through a process where i select the one that is the most reliable or the two or three that are the most reliable out of there's so many that I build, okay? So that's that's one of the ways that I that I select the carry gun, uh, and that's also how I selected the ammunition. I saw that hey, this ammunition works in even the finicky guns, and it's definitely working well in the guns that 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 seem to work well. Let's say with Tula, so I'm going to use this gun with this ammunition. Okay? So that's how I ended up selecting that ammunition. So so today uh, I decided, hey, let's do something. Let's go a little, you know, let's do the standard uh, empirical tests that I normally do. Um, you know, let's put it in the rifle, shoot it out to 100 yards, see what kind of groups that we get. Uh, now, and I've done this in the past, right? Um, uh, I don't think I did it on video, but in the, I, I've already knew what to expect. I knew to expect three to four inches, okay? Uh, which is kind of what I get with Tula as well. So it's not like it's any more any the accuracy is better than Tula or any of that you know nine millimeter at 100 yards out of a out of a six inch barrel typically gets three to four inches and then you'll get a couple of flyers that are like way off okay so that's what I get out of Tula and that's what I got today out of this okay but I said hey let's run it through the chronograph and see what type of velocity we get and how much of a variance we get, right? Like, what's the difference between the slowest shot and the fastest shot? Okay. So, I ran this set, I put it through this uh, six inch barrel here, right? Uh, let's see, later CCI. So, I got an average velocity of 1353, okay? Uh, 1353 uh, feet per second, okay? Uh, which translate into 468 foot pounds of energy. So, um, out of a six inch barrel, you know, it, this thing is pretty much hitting like a foot, like a ten, like a ten millimeter almost, right? Or you know, pretty much. Okay, um, it's got because the, the the longer barrel gives it that extra velocity. Okay, so uh, then I said, okay, let's put it in the uh, Glock 17. Okay, there it is. So I said, hey, let me run it through this Glock 17 over here. Okay, um, so I had the Glock 17. Uh, average velocity was 11.59. Okay. Um, which transfer, which basically uh, 11.59 feet per second, which gives me 
343 foot pounds of energy okay which is pretty much what i get from tula um you know shooting it out of the same length round okay so you know okay very good all right so but here's the here's the interesting thing now okay on both of these right when i looked at let's say shooting it out of the six inch barrel the five shot group right um the slowest was 1338 and the fastest was 1369 okay so the difference between my slowest shot and my fastest shot was 30 feet uh, actually 31 feet per second which is tiny i mean that's like kind of what i see out of like match grade you know two two three five five six ammunition okay so i said you know maybe that's a fluke so i i, I looked at the difference when i ran it through the glock 17 okay so on that one the slowest one was 11.45 the fastest one was 1177 so now that's a difference of 32 feet per second okay so that's two times in a row the difference between my fastest and slowest shot in the five shot group is 31 and 32 feet per second that's a very small difference uh particularly for nine millimeter what's more normal for most ammunition is to see a difference of about let's say 65 feet per second between your fastest and slowest shot um, and going up to almost uh, uh, to 130, even 130 feet per second, seeing a, even that much of a difference. So the, the 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 velocity is very very consistent coming out of this. So what that maybe do is say, wait a second, wait a second, okay. If if this ammunition is so consistent in velocities from one shot to the other, why the hell why the hell am I only getting like three and four shot you know three and four inch groups uh at, at 100 yards so i shot this up uh today a bunch of times and this is like the best group i've got here okay so at 100 at 100 yards a five shot group right where i got one two three you can see the holes here right they're basically at three and a half inches but then i get one wild one way the hell out here and i know i did not throw it that i, I know you know because i'm paying attention to my reticle when i'm shooting my reticles doing this boom 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 you know in order for the shot to go there i would have had to go boom like you know i would have to see it jump so i can't first of all i can't even explain why with such a small variance right of, of, of 30 31 32 feet per second you know even if i discount this flyer out here why are my groups three and a half inches i should be getting like one inch groups um and i i did this a bunch of times and i you know i i mean i did occasionally like here's one where yeah you know i i did manage to land i did manage to land like three shots like right next to each other so that's like a one and a half inch group but then the others went like really wide, right? So I did two more and they went really wide without explanation, all right? And then I did it again. Right? Again, I'm using like a, you know, a rifle here with an 8X magnification, right? 8 times magnification. And I can see the bullseye very clearly, right? My chevron's right underneath it. When I'm shooting, the chevron's going boom, boom, boom. Yeah, so I did the next group. I get one hit here, one hit here, one hit here, one hit here. One, two, three, four. Uh, that's probably the fifth one over there so i'm like i have no good way of explaining why these groups are as wide as they are right with the velocity being as consistent as it is i, I just can't explain it so this is not a video of me telling you guys hey i got the answer i don't know the answer okay um so i i, I just i just don't know okay um and you guys have seen me shoot let's say five five six two two three you see me you see me do videos where i got like half inch groups at 100 yards i'm shooting like wolf gold i'm getting like one inch groups at at, at 100 yards i'm getting those those kind of groups consistently and you know this isn't the first time i'm shooting laser at at 100 yards and you know my average is usually three to four inches okay and sometimes it opens up even beyond that I, I don't have a good explanation why okay so now um one of the things i did consider is maybe the rifle is pushing the bullet out uh too fast and it's going faster than the nine millimeter was designed to do and it's destabilizing it uh 
I forgot which. So anyway, I shot that. I don't know. I, I, I might have left the target downrange, but but basically, uh, it, the group opened up to f like I got an average group of four and a half inches. So it didn't like shrink down to like one like like a consistent two inches or anything like that. So so I did consider that maybe the there was too much velocity behind this nine millimeter ammunition. So when I went to seven and a half inch, it didn't do a whole lot better. Um, so what I think, I mean, the, the, the velocity is coming out of the barrel pretty consistent. But the only thing I can think of is, you know, it's a much fatter bullet, right? So normally at distance we're shooting, let's say like 5.56, five, which is basically a 2.23, right? Even if you're shooting 3 weights, you're shooting a 30 caliber. So in, in the 30 caliber is basically, even, even though it's like 30% of an inch wide, it's long. So I'm thinking that perhaps the fact that the 9 millimeter is a just a fat short bullet you know that might be the limitation that's that you know it might just be, because of that maybe it gets on just naturally gets unstable I, I, you know, I mean i did do a video where i um i think last week i had this rifle at a different location where i was shooting 300 yards um and that uh at the 300 yards i was getting about 50 percent hits on a target that was Basically, I think it was like uh, three feet tall by two feet wide, so about that size. 50% uh, hits, but you know, with the type of consistency that I am seeing, you know, from the velocity of uh, this ammunition, I would think that you know I, I would be getting like you know six to ten inch groups. I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't know. The, so, so that's some first to ponder. If you guys have any ideas of why this ammunition. Um, is, you know, even though the velocities are so consistent from shot to shot, you know, why do the groups, you know, open up to like, you know, three to four and plus inches? Why can't we hit one inch groups with nine millimeter at a hundred yards when the velocities are so consistent, so close to each other? So, so that is the question to ponder. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, so yeah, I mean, not a, you know, sometimes I do videos where I don't have all the answers. So thanks for watching. Drop some comments below, and I'll talk to you all soon. Hey, everyone. Uh, real quick, I want to talk to you guys about how do you defend to a jury, right, in a self-defense uh, uh, case, uh, your ammunition selection, okay, whether it's hollow points or full metal jacket, um, a prosecutor will say that you chose that ammunition because you wanted to uh, kill their client, okay? Um, so, you know, I spoke to my prepaid legal service, and what they told me, right, uh, was you pick the ammunition and the gun that you think will uh, you'll be able to use the best uh, to protect yourself, right, as long as it's legal, okay? So you pick the ammunition and you pick the gun, and then you leave the self-defense part up to uh, your, your, your lawyer, right? That's their job to explain to a jury uh, why you picked the ammunition and the gun that you selected. So as long as it's legal, right, um, they'll be able to, to make a good case on your behalf. Okay? So the lawyer doesn't have to be expensive, but don't wait until after you're in a, you know, in a, uh, in a legal bind before you start looking for them, right? Because if you do that, they're going to ask you for like a $3,000 retainer up front. Uh, I use U.S. Uh, Law Shield, right? The reason why I use them is because they're cheap. They're only $11 per month, right? And then with this promo code, Pocono Shooting, right? You get either one free month, two free months, uh, or they take $20 off. Depends on your state. That's a state-by-state -state thing, okay? Um so you got to have a prepaid legal service to explain to the jury, okay, why you selected the ammunition that you did, okay, and the gun that you did. You're not going to be the one that's going to do that. And certainly don't try and explain that to the cops uh, that might be arresting you, okay, because they're just, you know, they're just trying to uh, get you in some kind of a trap there um, that they can use against you later on, okay. You... You know, the way this legal service explained it to me when I went to one of their uh, seminars is you pick whatever gun and whatever ammunition you think you'll be able to use the best to protect yourself and your family and then leave the defense up to the lawyer. That's what you got them for. OK, they're going to explain that to the jury. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon.